And good day and welcome to another edition of Ultimate Politics. As always, I'm your host, Wade Norris, down here at 1510 AM, My Life Sports Radio. And with me is blogger extraordinaire, <laughs> my buddy and yours, Steve Balboni. Steve, welcome to the show. Good to see you, Wade. And uh, we're, we're just talking about uh, what's been going on with the election, the outcome, the consequence, and what's coming up next. Well, if Barack Obama you know, takes this move towards like programs, government programs, to, to put people back to work, you're going to hear... It'd be called socialism or communism. But the next time you're in Denver and you drive out to Morrison and you look at Red Rocks, I want you to go up and look at Red Rocks, that beautiful amphitheater, probably uh, the, one of the top places in the world to watch a musical concert or just to go you know, look at nature. Go out there, look at, you know, with the exception of the new museum, look at that entire structure that was built in the 19 uh, late uh, early 30s uh, through a Roosevelt WPA project, which was a, a youth program where they would get teenage boys from the inner city, age 16 to like 20, and they brought them out to Red Rocks and they put them in camps and they stayed there for like two, three years building the bleachers and carving out the stone. I mean, Red Rocks is the result of a, a works program like that. And you know, the contrast to that is walk down 16th Street Mall and look at how many kids don't have anything to do but loaf and walk up and down 16th Street <laughs> Mall. And you, you can think about how you could give each one of those kids some kind of skill and at the same time inject some eco economic uh, stimulation into uh, our economy. Because, you know, we, we've kind of seen the Bush plan was write everybody a check, they'll go spend money at Walmart, the wheels will turn. What we've seen, though, is people are in so much debt or have so much problems paying for gasoline, groceries. They get the, the, the check. They pay off some debt. The, you know, you don't see any return on that kind of situation. But if you were actually to put it into a, a program where you, you send people to work, give them a job, give yeah, them a sustain, skill. Sustained uh, income, right. Yeah, something that's going to make America – first again instead of you know instead of just a consumer nation a working nation yeah it, there's a so so roosevelt's elected and and institutes these new deal programs and and s manages to stabilize the economy if not outright pull us out out of the depression and things are looking pretty good he gets reelected in a landslide in 1936 Thank goodness. and then he <laughs> and then he puts the brakes on in 1937. Um, June-ish of 1937, he starts cutting funding for all these WPA programs, things like that. The economy, the stock market, and the economy in general crater once again. Uh, and, and, and in 38, they have to pull, they, by early 38, by spring of 38, they've, they've sort of reapplied um, uh, more, er, in, infused more cash into these programs and pulled us back up and leveled us back out again. And, and so the, the lesson, and Paul Krugman's been hammering on this in the New York Times as of late and, and, and a few other folks too, is, um, you know, the, the more aggressive is better than, than less aggressive. I mean, you, if you overcompensate and you overstimulate the economy, if you're Barack Obama and you pour, pour so much cash and, and, it's going to be hundreds of billions of dollars is what's needed. Krugman puts a number at about six hundred billion. Um, if you if you overestimate and you infuse more cash than is necessary, then then the Fed can raise interest rates and cool things down. But as it stands right now, the Fed can't cut interest rates anymore. So all that's left is you have to pour money in, and you have to remember the lesson of Roosevelt from 1937. He had leveled out the depression, uh, was pulling us back out. And sank us uh, by by rolling back some of these programs, became less aggressive, started worrying about balancing the budget. That can't happen right now. You can't worry about those things. Uh, this isn't like running a, a household. I mean, everybody talks about, well, my house has the budget, and we have to live within our means. It's it's a different situation when you're talking about a, a national federal government trying to stimulate the economy. There, um, so so hopefully um, it, there's some good people around uh, Senator Obama and and our pushing him in this direction. You know, if I had a magic wand, I would have Barack Obama say, okay, GM, Chevy, whoever, you get me an electric car, and right. I'll, give every, I'll give every federal contract car, like I'll make it, you know, a law, that if we need a car for a federal job, I mean, there's a lot of federal agencies out there, it will be a Chevy Volt. Yeah, the, I, I think that that is, is sort of the important thing, is that, you know, so we find $25 billion for Detroit. We, we don't just write them a $25 billion check. I mean, there's ways that you can do it uh, and, and make it effective and, and, and you know, increase the long-term viability of Detroit and, and, you know, do things for the environment. And, you know, the first thing we've got to get through is the Senate uh, runoff in Georgia. 
Now, you got on the Republican side, you got Saxby Chambliss. This is his first uh, reelection bid since 2002, and uh, he's running against Jim Martin. But let's look at how he got into office to begin with. You were just talking about the Republicans kind of rode a wave in 2002, kind of using we're against Terra and Democrats are soft on Terra. Well, there's no race that symbolized that more than the Georgia race between former Vietnam veteran Max Cleland, who was a triple amputee. He, he basically came back from Vietnam with the use of one arm and one hand. And that, you know, his other arm and his two legs were blown off uh, as he was, I believe, was diving on a grenade to he save was. his unit. That's exactly what he was doing. Um, so describe for people out there. Now, this is, I want you to turn off your right and your left. I want you to turn off your Republican and Democrat. But imagine somebody you knew sacrificed three of his limbs on a grenade in Vietnam, you know, is running for his Senate reelection, and Saxby Chambliss, your, the opponent, runs this kind of ad. Uh, this is 2002, and uh, um, we're coming, you know, we're, we're still sort of, uh, the country's still sort of dealing with 9-11 on an emotional level, and so the Republicans decide to run. Max Cleland decides, gives the green light to an ad which accuses um Shaxby Chambliss gives a green light to an ad which accuses Max Cleland of being soft on terror and puts his face literally next to the face of Osama bin Laden uh, and links uh, him to Osama bin Laden, uh, you know, less there a year after 9 11, uh, this triple amputee Vietnam veteran. So, so a decorated war hero saying that he is equated with he, Osama he's bin Laden. like Osama bin Laden. Yes. So, so that's the ad that, that that's the infamous ad. And so when it ran, I mean, it was obviously despicable and controversial and one of the people who spoke out very forcefully against that ad was another Vietnam veteran uh, Senator John McCain and McCain came out very strongly uh, called the ad dishonorable and 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 very strongly opposed the ad campaign well that was in 2002 well, now yeah. it's 2008 and the you know John McCain 2.0 I'm not sure how this guy where he came from but he's now down there uh, John McCain is he was down there yesterday campaigning for Saxby Chambliss in uh, the state of Georgia. So he, I mean, <laughs> it's really a testament to what John McCain from the first part of the decade to John McCain now, how far he's come that he would go down and campaign for a man that, that, that did this to a fellow Vietnam veteran. And uh, you mentioned Barack Obama. It's looking like he's not going to go to campaign for Georgia. And I've read the the reasons why, let's say he goes down there and puts his political clout out for Jim Martin, and Jim Martin loses, what's that say about the new president, you know, that he doesn't have any ability? And I can see that, but this is almost like, you know, this would be, the way I think about it, I woke up this morning thinking about it, this would be like, you're a freshman in high school, this is Jim Martin, and you're showing up at, you know, homecoming, and your older brother is the senior quarterback star guy. And all you want him to do is just come down to the front bleachers and just give you a terrorist yeah, fist, little fist jab, <laughs> little fist jab, and then everybody be like, "That's his, that's yo, that's his brother," you know. And then and then all of a sudden you you be like freshman, you know, new guy. Everybody's like, "Hey, you're so and so's little brother." All right. So this is like Barack Obama won't even come down and like just give his his buddy uh, Jim Martin a fist jab. That's that's all he'd have to do. <laughs> he wouldn't even have to say Jim Martin. He could just run commercials saying eh, this is what I think the safest thing Barack Obama could do in, in Georgia. Just go there, make some public appearances, and say it's always important to exercise your right, right to vote. And he wouldn't even have to say the candidate's name, you know, always choose to vote. Yeah, I think considering that it's Georgia, it's the Old South, uh, that he's the first African-American elected, I, I, I think going down and, and doing some uh, sort of strategic targeted rallies, just a couple. Uh, it doesn't have to be down there day after day after day after day stumping for it, but just go down and do a couple of little things. Steve Balboni, thanks for being on. Good to see you, Wade. Thanks. Hey, give us a plug of that uh, that blog site you do. Oh, thanks, Wade. Uh, steampoweredopinions.blogspot.com. All uh, one word, steampowered opinions. And you can check out his uh, his rantings and logical <laughs> stuff there on steampoweredopinions.blogspot.com. And uh, you can always email me, wade at ultimatepolitics.net. And we will see you next time. Have a good one.